Well, the MIT faculty open access policy started with a directive from the chair of the faculty to set up a committee to investigate whether the way the digital world is evolving in terms of scholarly publishing, whether that really is still serving the needs of the faculty or the needs of MIT, or in fact the progress of scholarship. Because there are two things that are happening simultaneously. On the one hand, the internet and the World Wide Web make it much, much easier to distribute knowledge, to repurpose it, to do all sorts of things with it. And at the same time, the digital world makes it possible to control distribution of that in ways that weren't possible before. So you can digitally prevent someone from lending someone a copy of a paper, or prevent your students from using it in class, or prevent you even excerpting it and giving pieces to a colleague. And there's a real question about whether, whether that's the right evolution, whether that really is continuing to serve the progress of scholarship. So the MIT faculty open access policy is a statement by the MIT faculty that their mission to further scholarship is best served if their work is made as openly available as possible. It's a statement by one of the world's leading research institutions about, about its place in actually the future of scholarship. Because what we're talking about as we evolve towards the digital world is who actually is going to have a say in how scholarly communication evolves. So the impact so far is that MIT is in discussion with publishers. Some of the open access work is done with the cooperation of publishers. Some of it is done kind of in spite of publishers. Overall, about a third of the publications of MIT faculty over the last year are now open access through the MIT policy. The thing that I would like the world to know about the MIT faculty open access policy is that MIT is continuing its leadership as one of the top world's research institutions in saying we're not only talking about the production of knowledge and then throw it over the world to some place. We are actually concerned that this knowledge becomes available to the public and distributed, and we're not turning away from the future of scholarly publishing.